Core system login in progress. Alrighty, let's get back to our mesh library. Go to the scenes folder, double click on our models folder. Expand them. We are about to add the opposites part to this folder. Go to the scripts models, right click, add a script, call it opposites part. Double click to open it up. Get rid of everything inside. Put a mesh part M opposites at the top. Very simplistic, isn't it? So first, let's go to the mesh parts itself. Where are you? Right there. Hold on one second. I say to hold on one second right before I adjust my body, before I pause the video. That's hilarious. Okay, so we are in the mesh part. And right down here somewhere, I don't care where. Right up at the top. Right after source, let's say. Put a opposite part. And just call it opposites part. It's a part of our model. So. We need to go over to mesh parts now. Refresh parts, refresh part, clear meshes, let's put this, and I put it down at the bottom. Make a recursive, let's make a little recursive cursive function here. Well, not really, but similar And we need a part, an opposite, we need an entry in the opposite part. For each shape. We'll go ahead and update the parent just in case we haven't already. Try to get the current opposite part if it's there. And if it's not there, we'll add it. What am I doing? Hold on. Okay. So we don't want to touch, we don't have shapes yet, we don't want to touch any opposites we already set. Uh, system array resize shouldn't do that, but we still want to be safe. So up here at the top, put a public mesh shapes and shapes because we need a list of our shapes. in our mesh parts. I 
and we can just pop that up towards the top actually we don't have to do it every loop we will default it to itself. I did it there also. I keep trying to use M underscore parts for our member level and I should be using my local all right and now right above this we'll do that this to our mesh parts front end it's simple dimple alrighty what Yes, it does. Oh, I didn't save. Yeah, I didn't save mesh parts. Okay. Unity gets me on those errors because Microsoft doesn't return on me anymore because you've declared the value, although you haven't saved the file yet. Okay, right here, refresh opposites. It, it Well, I didn't put shapes in there yet. Okay, we've got to set our shapes. And go up here. Well, we can't really do that yet. So I have to do this. That's okay. So let's go ahead and get our mesh library editor in place. And it's going to be very simple. One function. Go under Editors, Models, right click, Add a Script, Mesh Library, Editor. And of course, we've got to go write this function. 
first. And it is really simple. Okay. No. That's all of it. That's basically updating all of our prefabs for us. Of course, the only prefab we truly have is this one up here. Okay, so let's go look at our mesh parts. Object. It's down here now. And if we want to verify that our prefab is getting updated, we can jump back over to the hexagon screen really fast, expand it, and we'll see that the opposite part is getting added to our prefab. So that's working. But now we need to set them in a in this new stage, this is this can be kind of annoying. We so we need to build an editor for this. Our editor window. which means we also need an editor. So, first off, we're going to go back to editors, models, add a script, opposite part, opposites, part, editor, and then add another one, opposites, part win and open both of those in Visual Studio. Let's go ahead and do the win first. This is our biggest hunk of code right now, to date. In the editors, that is. So sometimes I like to have an easy way to set all the values to a certain value. And that's basically what the set all mesh part is. We'll have a point to drag it to and that will just set all of the opposites for that side to that. Then you can go back through and edit the few that are different.
We need to get our two values. opposite parts in the actual mesh part that we are editing. We'll need both of them. So we'll try. To get one. Or we'll try to re-get it if it's null for some reason. Selected an opposite part. Actually it should be add an opposite part. To whatever you have selected. Return else we'll check on the mesh part itself. Return because if those are null, we can do nothing else. Now, Unity will actually initialize our any array that comes up in the editor but it won't it will not do it immediately it takes a few seconds so we need to check if it's been initialized so if the opposite parts is brand new we have to give it a couple seconds to initialize it do a checkbox which unity calls a toggle field I believe that's from Mac. Typo of So, if the set all is not equal to null, then we'll set the opposites to it. We don't want to do that over and over again. So down here, we'll null out our set all. And else, we're going to allow them to lag, allow you <laughs> to drag and drop it. Not the hide none or opposite parts. Opposite is not equal to so hide none basically hides any entry in the opposites that is. Um, set to the none side and you can turn that on and off but
like to put a box around everything. That's right, isn't it? Yes. Mosquito got in my house and she has targeted at me. Now we're just going to do two small buttons. First one is N for none. And we'll set it to the parent.none side. And the second one is D for default. And we'll set it to the actual mesh part. Then down here we'll put a space. I don't know, 7F. Okay, so now we jump over to our opposite parts editor. And it will be fairly. Simplistic. Editors can be simplistic. Our window. No, I don't even need that, do I? We're not using that yet. So it's grayed out up here because we're not using it, but oh well. Save all. And let's see here. Let's do side. Zero first. Let's see, let's look at our. Yeah, none should be none and none because it is done. So, side zero against another full shape. Full shape is none. Side one is none. In fact, everything right now is none against full. because full covers everything. Bam. Fairly easy. Our opposites are now in there. Let's get back to our scene so we can implement them, which is only a little bit of code. Access granted. Alrighty, welcome back. We need to do one more thing before we leave over here. If you remember, we duplicated our flat top into all of our other sides. Well, we need to put the proper side on, on them now because we need that. So side one would be neighbor zero. Side, or excuse me, side zero would be neighbor zero. Side one would be neighbor one and so forth. Top will be correct, but the bottom will need to be changed to neighbor seven. Once you do that, 
Look on the refresh button, refresh prefab at the mesh library. Shut it down. Jump over to our other scene, our hexagon scene. And we should see matching results. Awesome. Now we're going to go to our code. Jump down to our evaluate function and we're going to add a new line of code in here. Going to get the proper part for this opposite. And basically what we're doing, going to our side, saying which side are you? We're looping through our sides for this shape. Which side are you? I'm side zero. Okay, I want to go to neighbor that's opposite of you, which would be right there. And I want to get its shape in. Now which mesh part do I use to draw you? And I will simply replace this with this. Now before we leave here, let's go up to our generate function, wherever that's at, and let's just turn this to always be, I think, zero. So it's always grass right now. Turn to unity. And our camera is way too fast because we have it set for the large size. So we turn that to six and two. I actually turned the jump speed up to six also. And there we go. We're now cooking with our mesh library, but this isn't very exciting though, is it? I mean, it's just fools. So let's go back to Blender and create two halves. I'm going to create the bottom half and the top half. And add a little bit of variety to our scene. 